this is the plank I'm going to use for the, the CNC carving. Um, this plank, I think I milled this back in after Hurricane Isabel. I think it came down in Hurricane Isabel, this cherry tree. It was uh, 2003, so I've had it quite a long while. And uh, it's a really wide plank, two inches thick, so it'll, it'll give me the inch and three quarters that I need for the um, panels on the altar. And uh, I'll have to tack on a little bit in a couple of places to get the height I need for parts of the pulpit, but that's fine. I've divided this thing up. You might be able to see the pencil lines into the six panels, and it is just barely long enough to do the job. So I'm going to use my saber saw to get myself a reference cut along here so that I can then slice this, or not slice it, but cut it into the, the correct uh, length panels and then, uh, you know, I'll flatten them and so forth. These pieces are 16 inches wide, so they're too wide for my planer, so I'll, I'll flatten them and thickness them on the, on the drum sander.
finally a little bit of silence. This is uh, the second one of the pieces I glued up. This is the lower right hand corner for the altar. So this is the lower left quadrant of the altar and I used the Z level carving method for the rough out where the software fig figures out what the profile is at the depth of your pass. So I've set my pass at a quarter inch. So every quarter inch down, the software figures out the profile that it needs to, to cut. And uh, it's kind of like a topographical map. And uh, then it cuts it. And then this is a lot faster cutting than using the raster method. Um, but it doesn't give as smooth a presentation as the raster method. Here's the cross and sun for the pulpit. The two pieces fit together pretty nicely. It's without the final fitting, but you know, the joints there, but I think I can clean that up and make that fairly invisible. Over here on the four pieces for the, the altar, that's gonna be a little tougher cleanup. You got four pieces. I'd like to be able to connect the bottom and top of this um, carving before I glue it down onto the you know the bent lamination so here's the, here's what I'm going to try first of all I'm going to line every, everything up as good as I can then I'm going to use masking tape to tape the top in place so things can't shift then I'll flip this over with a 2x4 or something under here to give it support and use uh, veneer tape to make strips all the way across. That way I've got the back secured with veneer tape. Flip it back over, take the masking tape off, and then I can gently open up the joint, you know, like this, get some glue in there, press her back down again, the veneer tape giving us some tension to draw these two pieces together and let that dry. Now I know it's being end grain glue joint which is not the strongest but on the other hand it's better than nothing. So let's give it a try.
Okay, I got a little bit of a Rube Goldberg, but I think I've got it clamped up enough. I'll let it dry. All right, so there's the pulpit uh, carving. It's glued together. I tried to sand and that uh, joint, you know, the little discontinuity that you have with the joint uh, as best I could. I put a coat of shellac on it, just brushed it on the real thin one pound cut shellac. Um, I'll probably try to work at it a little more with sandpaper. I don't know, maybe it's just me because I know where the joint is, who notices it. <laughs> maybe it's really not that noticeable for everybody else. But at any rate, uh, the process seemed to turn out pretty good. Um, I really can't complain. Well, I've brushed on two coats of shellac, and uh, now I'm going to get ready to spray some lacquer. But before I do that, I'm just trying to get that little roughness from the shellac down. And uh, instead of trying to sand into all these little crevices, I'm just using a brass wire brush. And uh, that seems to work pretty nicely. 